the video. Uh, yeah, I'll be starting the video shortly. And but I'm going to introduce Mike, who is oh. our presenter today. Now he has provided us with a, I believe it's a 28 and a half minute video. Um, and then we'll have a question time afterwards. And Mike is new to our chapter. And he works as an optician here in town. And we are really excited to, for everyone to see the video that he provided. Um, he's moved back to Helena after a number of years on the east, in, very far to the east from us. And he has become an avid hiker and a photographer of flowers since he got back. And I was working with a friend of his that helped him with his video. And he described him as a cowboy that doesn't own a computer. And he kept emphasizing that he doesn't own a computer. But so um, I should start the video because it's what everybody's here for. <laughs> should we mute or do anything like that or stop? If you mute yeah, I'm glad you reminded yeah. me. I'm glad you reminded me. If you mute and turn off your cameras, it will be uh, better for everybody to see the video better. And I'll get it working as soon as I can. I practiced immediately before everybody got on and it worked. Oh, there it is, okay. Hi, I'm Mike Marsh and I was contacted about doing a presentation with my wildflower pictures that I've taken with poems included. And I thought about it for a while and thought, oh, it would be a fun thing to do. I have a lot of passion for my wildflowers and also for the poems that uh, go with them. I work as an optician in Helena, so I really don't have or any type of photography expertise. I carry my uh, cell phone around with me. It's an iPhone and so it's always there and I've just found that I developed this passion to take flowers and, and I really like how they turned out after I took them. I got started taking wildflower pictures. I was out taking my dogs for hikes and I noticed that the variety and there were so many of them uh, the first one kind of funny I took of a thistle and I just thought they were beautiful and uh, it was of course out of focus and but I liked it and I proceeded to keep on trying to take pictures and the more I got involved with doing it I, I think I've improved my uh, end results. I'm an avid hunter and when I moved back to Helena, uh, I started taking walks with my large Munsterlanders and I trained them and when I first got back here I was in a field and I was training and I looked over and the whole field was covered with these blue flowers which I didn't know what they were. Uh, did some research, took some pictures of them, found out that they were lupins and it was just gorgeous.
And why I was there, I kind of started looking down on the ground and stuff and found a flower that I'd never seen before. Took the picture of it and uh, I, when I went home to look at it, it was uh, this gorgeous, beautiful flower. It was early in the morning when I was, took this and it had raindrops on the flower and I posted it on the Montana Wildflower um, site and I got over a thousand likes on it. So I knew I was kind of onto something and I really enjoyed uh, now finding different flowers, taking a picture and it's become a real passion for me. I started posting some of my uh, pictures on Facebook, which also I was involved with the political division that was going on and still going on uh, on Facebook in the United States. And my sister knew that I had really had a passion for wildflowers. She says, why don't you do something positive instead of getting involved with all this negative political crap is really what it is. So we kind of came up with an idea, she did, that I, sh I would post one of my wildflower pictures one a day for one complete year. I started doing that on January 25th of 2021 and religiously every morning I'd get up and I would post a picture. About eight months into it I added a poem to a couple of them and my sister said you know she'd like to see more of that and so I've really tried to include a poem with every post of my wildflowers on Facebook. This was pretty natural for me. I just love poetry. I've tried to write poetry um, but I like how people have the talent to put into words their really true feeling and it just was such a natural to include that with my wildflowers. During the process of taking numerous wildflower pictures, uh, it was fairly difficult to identify what they were. And I had books, I went out and got all the standard books, but on one of the Facebook posts, somebody, I think it was the Montana Wildflower Facebook page, somebody uh, talked about um, app called Picture This. Uh, I went and looked online, you have to pay for it, but it was such, is such a time-saving and valuable source of information. You take the picture, it scans it, and it'll tell you the name of the flower, um, and included in that, if you go farther down on it, you can, it usually would have some type of poem that would relate to the flower that I was uh, posting. It was very helpful. If you haven't done it, you should go out. If you're really into wildflowers or any plants for that matter, um, go online and take a look to, and find that app. It's a great one.
several things I've learned when I started taking pictures was I would, oh, I want to make copies of it and blow it up. Well, if you're not perfectly focused in on that plant, it's going to come up and be blurry and not printable, really, in my mind. So I started really paying attention of focusing on the flower. I might even be back farther than, I'm not right up close to it. And taking that picture and then with just limited editing, uh, cropping it, and the results have really, really been a, an improvement for when I started. I started doing it, I went back and started looking when I started taking my first flower, it was like 2016, and it's developed so much more, my positioning, you know, what's the background, how can I, I took a picture of a Seiko lily, and we had stopped, a friend of mine and I had stopped, we were out camping, and saw a whole field of them, and I went out there, took several pictures of this Lily, it was the first time I'd taken the picture of it, and I knew by now that I just didn't have the flower that I wanted, and going back to the RV, I happened to see one that was in the shadows, and I just, you, it, you finally click and you think, that's what I want to get. Took the picture, and it came out exactly what I was looking for. Don't get discouraged. Take a look at it. Use your imagination. Use um, the lighting. That's a very important thing. Overcast days are a lot better than sunny days. I love it when it's rained because then you'll start getting droplets on your flowers and it just adds to the um, complexity and beauty of that flower. Bitteret is such an interesting flower, like I said, I didn't even know what it was when I first started getting into uh, photographing wildflowers. And since then I've taken numerous and numerous pictures of this beautiful flower. This last year, a friend of mine and I had seen these, or she had seen uh, a whole hillside of these flowers up in Helena. And of course, I was excited to go out there and photo shoot them. We had made a plan to go about four o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, she had made up a basket of goodies. We did, thought we'd do a little picnic with some wine. We go out there, could not see any blooms open at all. Little did I realize that the bitterroot in the afternoon sun will close up to preserve the moisture and so I had to go back the next day. I was going to go to Missoula, I was on my way to Missoula and the same lady invited me for breakfast but I was so excited about getting pictures of the bitterroot that and I knew I could see that there's thousands of them out there that instead of going to breakfast right away it was about seven eight o'clock in the morning I ran out to this field where they were. Again, I went out there and being disappointed, none of them had opened up yet. 
went back to Helena, had breakfast, it was about 10 o'clock, went back out there, and of course now I'm kind of a little bit discouraged. Well, the whole hillside was all opened up. It was a beautiful day, and I captured several, several pictures of the Buddha. Interesting about them, if you start looking at them, every one is completely different and so intricate that I just fell in love with them. You know, one of my favorite flowers, if it's right up there, I mean, the bitterroot's nice, but I was, this was two years ago, I was out with my dogs looking around and I saw a patch of flowers, but it was across this creek and it was fairly wide and I looked at it and looked at it, but I had this urge, you know, this drawing urge. I came back, came back, looked at it, and I thought, I just got to get over there. So I found a, a forge to, so I could walk across this creek, got over there, and it was one of the most beautiful flowers I'd ever seen. And it turned out it was a, a fairy slipper and very intricate. Well, this year, and they're very rare and very hard to find, and this year I was up in Clancy and we had went to a meeting of my friend's kids and on the way up there, it was on a mountaintop, I, I wanted to stop, of course, once you, and because I'd seen numerous wildflowers all the way up to this cabin. And we visited with them, came back, and this friend of mine went to Helena, and I live in Jefferson City, so I, she took a left, I took a right down the thing, and of course, in my back of my mind, I'm thinking, uh, I'll certainly be able to get some pictures of wildflowers. I drove down there, and after I had numerous wildflowers that I had taken, but this time, I'd seen the fairy slipper again. It was up on a bank, and I, got them a lot more in focus and it was just great to uh, realize it you know it took me two hours to go about uh, maybe 10 miles that's how many times I'd stop and see it so if you're out there they're out there you just have to you know open up your eyes stop smell the roses and you will see them I went out a friend's cabin up in around Sealy and I was out there for, went out in the morning for about five, 10 minutes, came back in. I had captured about five or six completely different wildflowers I'd never taken a photo of in just a matter of 10 minutes. Came back, did some fast editing and showed him that. He was amazed that there was that many wildflowers right in his backyard. So if you look for them, they're going to come out here. Montana has such a beautiful, so many different wildflowers that you really can get involved with them, which I have. One of the other uh, things that I've done was did a study on a flower that I saw when I was again going out dog training. Uh, 
going up the road, I saw this bush and this beautiful yellow, it's called a blazing star, multiple flowers, went up, took several pictures of it, proceeded to go do my training, and I would go back there weekly, um, and every time I would go by there, that plant was still there, and I, it surprised me how durable of a plant it was. It's usually found in a real gravelly uh, hillside, and so every two weeks I started taking a picture and document it, and I wanted to kind of find out how long I could continue taking pictures of this uh, beautiful flower. Um, it lasted for about well over two months. Every two weeks I documented it, took a picture of it, and um, it was just a really beautiful flower. Well, last fall, I liked it so much, I went back up there and it creates little pods uh, full of seeds. And I have a little place where I live that I've planted wildflower seeds, and I thought that would be kind of a good addition if I could get them to grow. Well, this late fall, I had to put down one of my hunting dogs and uh, buried her uh, on the place, real gravelly area. And um, I, after a couple days, of course, I started thinking about these uh, seeds that I had and what a, that would be a perfect place. So instead of trying to germinate them on my own, I spread them over the top of her grave. And hopefully this spring, um, they will produce some plants. I haven't, now that app I talked to you about has a whole planting thing, so, and I haven't looked at it, I just did this, but it might take a year or two to germinate, but it would be really a kind of a cool addition uh, for my property to have these plants. Another wildflower that's dear to my heart, when I was a little boy, um, I lived in Plentywood, and we lived right by the golf course. Of course, there was, we had sand greens, if you can believe that, but they had hillsides, and we'd go up there, of course, in the spring, and the hillsides were covered with, we call them crocuses, the pask or posk flower wildflower. And so when I started seeing them around the Helen area, they always seemed bigger, um, a little bit different colors, see more uh, purple, darker tones. And so I've really enjoyed taking pictures of those that brought back childhood memories of going up there and picking them for my mom. Now, talking about picking wildflowers, I really don't want to disturb the area that I'm in. I don't like picking them. Um, like I talked about the um, fairy slipper, that's almost an endangered wildflower. And if you pick it, it will kill the flower. It won't come back up. So. If you're out there taking pictures, you know, just be real conscientious about where you're stepping. Um, try to leave them there for the next person coming through. And I know it, you tendency you want to pick them and bring them home, um, but take a picture, and uh, they'll be with you forever that way.
another beautiful flower that you find kind of in the summer, this would be more of a summer flower, is a columbine. And this last year was the first year that I found one and uh, took several pictures of. It's, uh, we were out camping and uh, found this in a stream bed and it's just a really gorgeous flower. I only have found one uh, with my travels, but I tend to uh, feel that I'm gonna be able to find more when I look. It's a really uh, intricate and beautiful flower. Late summer flower is a Rocky Mountain bee plant. Gorgeous flower. Uh, they tend to be around the roadsides you will see them. Well, I didn't realize, again, just taking a picture, um, I've taken them several years. They're such a beautiful flower. But they start producing later in the summer, they start producing pods that come down. and. That flower too, I've been out this last fall to collect the seeds and I included that on the grave of this dog that I had. But they're a gorgeous, gorgeous flower and readily available. You can see them along the roadsides uh, late summer. One of the other things I found uh, late summer, for an example, the rubber rabbit brush flower, they just start flowering immense yellow uh, floral all over the place. And they're really intricate if you get up close and look at them. A lot of people think they're kind of weedy or almost like sagebrush, but they themselves have such a beautiful um, presentation and delicacy that's hard to resist when you're out there taking pictures. I'd like to reiterate, you know, when you get out there, if you get the passion or the bug, Montana has so many wildflowers, it's just unbelievable. Once you start looking, it's really good exercise. A lot of people hike, um, although you probably won't get far because you'll walk about 10, 10 feet, 5 feet, and there will be another wildflower to take a picture of. But really get out there and start looking, you, it's just like anything, pretty soon you'll develop an eye and you'll get excited when you finally come into uh, capturing a, and preserving a new species of wildflower. That's one of my favorite things now is that trying to find the next one that I haven't captured. I'd like to thank the Montana Native Plant Society for giving me the opportunity to, to present uh, two of my passions to you. And I'd like to uh, end this with one final quote.
Wow, that was really well done, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I had fun doing it. Yeah, what a nice way to end the evening, too. Are you, you know, it's not quite the end of the evening, but close. It was amazing. Well, it's cold outside and everything else. This is what we have to look forward to here. Not too long time coming, so. Your story. Hey Mike, I noticed uh, one of your poems, the author had the name Marsh in it. Is that any relative of yours? Yeah, I, you know, I had a, this prairie smoke and I couldn't find anything. You know, I Googled, tried to look for a poem that was appropriate. So I just threw it out there and she's been really a follower of some of my posts and she came up with this. Uh, I would have posted another one from somebody else, but it was uh, not appropriate, I would say, but she's, she's a good friend of mine also. But yeah, this is a, a second cousin. She grew up in Plentywood. Um, her brother, she had a brother that's two weeks older than me. And we had both the same name, Mike Marsh. So it was quite confusing. <laughs> and of course, when the principal would call for Mike Marsh to come down, I, I would just sit there and say, oh, it's the other guy. Well, of course, you know what happened. The, will the other Mike Marsh please come down, you know? But anyway, so yeah, it was good to add something like that, can get something, you know, and uh, she was happy to have done it. We have a good comment. I we have a comment from Karen. She's my cohort in uh, our activities. She says she's so impressed and thanks for the vision of spring, summer, and fall. Very your good. story about uh, a couple of your stories about where you found so many of those flowers or different kinds of flowers reminds me of last summer was the first time I went to Yellowstone. We were actually coming back from my parents' house and Jim was driving and I'm like looking both ways on the side of the road and I'm getting dizzy and I'm just getting wore out from just looking. And finally I say, just pull over over here. And I get out and I had seen pictures that people had posted on the, the Montana wildflower Facebook page of the mountain lily. And I found one and I'm like, oh, cool. So of course I'm bent down with my camera taking a picture and then I look up and there was a field full of them. Isn't that, isn't that a phenomenal feeling? Wow, yeah. yeah. And Jim's just sitting back there laughing at me because I'm like, oh my God, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, you know, this has really opened up um, some different avenues, different people. And uh, it's been a really, a such a positive thing for me, I'm really, I'm glad I got the bug and the passion and uh, it's it's been really extremely fun to do. Looking forward to this coming year, so. Where do you get your music from? That was from the person, the people that um, did this. It's Jackie Henning is her name and okay. uh, good question. Yeah, well, I felt like it was a really nice selection of music. Um, it really kind of helped bring you into the pictures and the poems and well that was my turn who's going to sit there for a third you know we got to keep their their attendant you know want to keep on watching for the next one next one i think uh they did just a tremendous tremendous uh work for me they're they've been longtime friends their name is uh, steve and jackie henning they have a company, uh, the AMS Digital Productions, and a lot of the company has to do with just letting people, businesses especially, or people or organizations tell their story. And his wife does all the videoing. And then he's more of the, the production, per looks at everything, and you know no we got to do this we got to do that he's he's got quite the eye he's an artist he does landscape art and um a lot of i have got a couple of his originals and just really both of them such a talented team um artists that it 
it was nice to reconnect with them. I hadn't been, I hadn't seen them for well, five years, something like that. So it was nice to get back in there. And we started up like we had nothing had, you know, changed between us. So we have another compliment from Jessica that said that was such a nice video. I can't wait to go on a wildfire flower expedition. I can't wait to see my favorite bluebells. And also a question from Karen, have you kept track of how many wildflowers you have photographed or how many photos you have taken over the years? Well, I start, the first one was 2016. And I think um, individually, I probably have 175 different individual wildflowers all from Montana. And I probably have 1500 uh, pictures um but species about 175 and about 1500 uh different pictures and you know with the digital camera you you can delete all your mistakes you might yeah. say or whatever so i've tried to really keep the what ones i feel are the best that that i like you know so so i have a question if if that's okay to ask Sure. Sure. Um, so now that you're bringing poetry in with your pictures, do you sometimes read a poem and try to find the plants, or do you just focus on the plants and poetry uh, comes later? I primarily focused on the plant, and then uh, you know I had most when I started uh, putting these on Facebook. Of course, I had all the pictures. So then I had to go out and search for a poem that was appropriate for that uh, flower. So that's how I've done it. That, that doesn't mean I can't change. I might have a, um, well, that fairy little, fairy slipper flower, that poem that that lady wrote for that was such a, you know, like here you come in and you see these little bitty and you're, you're in awe and you leave without, a trace kind of type of thing. That was a one of my favorite poems that I found. So yeah, I'm, you never know if I find a poem I like, I might, yeah, coordinate it and see if I can find the flower that that best uh, goes with it. Yeah. yeah. I've never seen a fairy slipper. Um, about how tall is the plant? How big they're, are the flowers? They're very small. I mean, shoot, they're about that big. Wow. You know? Yeah, they're very, but they usually are in clusters. So you have about like this last one I had, there must have been 20 or 30 of them all scattered out on this bank, you know, very un 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 unusual that way. I've only seen yellow lady slippers in a while. So. And there. I haven't got, I haven't got <laughs> those tonight. A I think friend of mine, a co-worker, co he has a cabin in his house here. The noise of your friends can do. Yeah. Well, Wayne has a question, Wayne I know. Oh, uh, Mike, I just wanted to say uh, how inspiring this program was. And I just love the fact that you combine the poetry with the wildflowers and your wonderful wildflower pictures and stories. Um, I would, uh, are you still posting those uh, Facebook uh, daily um, things you mentioned? I went 365 days and that ended in January the 26th. And I kind of have stayed off Facebook. Um, I'll, I'll be, now when spring comes up, I notice already somebody's already posted a buttercup you know, up in Missoula, which is a little f farther ahead of us. So I will start, I'll be posting them here in the spring again. Is there any way to go back and look at your previous post? I don't know if yes. that can be done. You're, oh, sure. You can um, uh, just Facebook me and you, yeah, you can, once you're a, a, a friend of mine, you can just go back there. And you'll see every day there will be one. So, do I have to be friends with you to do it or what? I think, yes. The way I have my uh, Facebook set up, I, yeah, it's kind of just, you know, 
I think that they, if they're a member of the uh, Montana Wildflowers page, that they can see them as well. Because I saw them before you and I were members or friends. You know, I opened them up too opened for the public, so that might be not true. Not true. Either one. I saw that. It's such uh, a good idea. The buttercup the other day too. It's such a wonderful idea to start your day with uh, a wildflower and a poem. I mean, I just think that's a wonderful way to start the day, and I'd like to start doing that. You should. You should. It is a great day to way to start the day. You get rid of the negatives. You're hopefully you hope you've made somebody smile. You know, somebody that might not look at a poem every day or look at a wildflower every day. Um, I, I, I had a, it got to be a fair good number of people that every day, you know, and now they're kind of disappointed. When are you going to, when are you going to send another one? <laughs> what, what is your name on Facebook? Mike Mars. M-A-R-S-A. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks, Mike. You bet. Yeah. Thanks, Harold. If I if I could take a minute just to thank some people here too, I don't know when's the best time. Are we done with the questions and answers? Or I haven't seen any more questions. So okay. yeah, now's a good time. You know, I just wanted to thank the uh, the Kelsey chapter of the Montana Native Plant Society for contacting me and. Uh, um, Cecilia, Bob, and Mark, you guys all been instrumental in putting this on and motivating me to do something rather than just sitting around all uh, winter. And it's, it's been a really fun uh, project for me to do and reacquaint with everybody. I'd like to thank my dad. He was a, uh, he's had flowers all my life. And they weren't wildflowers. You know, we never even did that. I didn't do any of that going out when I was living in Plentywood, but he always had a flower garden. And um, I've always had flowers around me, uh, domesticated. And uh, now I don't even need them. I can just go out in my backyard and really get the real thing. And my sister, my twin sister, uh, instrumental in, um, how do I say this kind of, you know, do more, do more, you know, give more, let's get the poems on there and kind of just been inspirational. So I really appreciate her. Um, numerous uh, family and friends have been both encouraging and supportive. I've had people send me wildflower books, you know, when I was struggling to know the name and things like that. Um, Elaine is a really good friend of mine. I want to thank her for taking me on camping trips. Um, she doesn't want to ever walk with me again because uh, like I say, I'll walk about two, two feet and I'll be sitting down taking pictures. So anyway, I sent this to a real good friend, longtime friend of mine, and he commented, which I thought was uh, uh, really good and inspiring people to observe beauty that is all around us is a worthwhile endeavor, especially when it involves our great outdoors. So he, he caught it right there. And that's what it's about, making the, the wildflower the star and enhancing somebody's life. I mean, it's enhanced mine, but if I can enhance other people's, that is really what this is all about. And of course, the real thanks go to mother nature providing us with such beauty that inspires our passions. It should if it doesn't already. So that's it. I want to tell a funny story about you. Okay. So I, I found him on Facebook and I sent him this message through Facebook, through Messenger. And I asked him if he would do this presentation. And he got back to me and he said, well, first I have to check out your organization because there's a lot of crazies out there. <laughs> So, and there I got checked out fine. <laughs> so. You did. You did. I'm so glad. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So, any other questions from anyone?